Hey, this is Redman coming to you live from the Road Famous Comedy Store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. There's a real audience here. Are you guys excited? You're at the number one live podcast in the world. Come on, guys. You have to make more noise than that. We're in the main room. Brian Redband's here. Hey, guys. Eddie Firth from the hit show, Historical Roast, streaming live on Netflix over there. We got Ryan J.E. Belt right here, house artist, drawing tonight's episode. He draws all the posters that uh, go around on the tour with us, all the anniversary posters. Those are all available at ryanjebelt.com, and he draws every episode. How exciting. That's We're great. back home after a week-long break. Mm hmm we're refreshed. Oh, did you hear that? That's the one and only Aphrodite yeah, over there, everybody. Oh, shit. Look at that. She's got the hair down tonight. Either that or she got hit by one of those tornadoes or something. We don't know what's going on. But uh, we're back on the road. Uh, the end of next week, we go to uh, Lawrence, Kansas, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Appleton, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Chicago, Madison, Minneapolis, Poughkeepsie, and two shows in New York, New York City. Remember when that list used to be long when I, I would say it? It's now it's short half. again. Look yeah. at that. Anyway, you know what keeps us energized is delicious caveman coffee. Go to cavemancoffeecompany.com. Use the promo code KILLTONY. Save 15%. Isn't that fun? And you know what else is important on the road, Brian, that we, we've learned and we talk about a lot? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, it's taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And support for Kill Tony comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Have you ever had a manscaping accident? Of course you have. That's why Manscaped and created the Lawnmower 2.0 electric accident. trimmer with patented skin safe technology. No more painful nicks or snags, guaranteed. Over 1 million men have confidently Manscaped with Manscaped's precision engineered tools. You know, this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts either. Like, how many times have you shaved using a razor and accidentally hit a vein? It, it, this won't do that. It's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. Always use the right tools for the job. Manscaped also has the crop preserver hey. and anti chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You, can, you already put deodorant on your pits, you know? Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Yeah. In my opinion, the second smelliest part of your body, if you think about it. Get 20% off free shipping and a free travel pack with the code TONY. <laughs> with the code TONY at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Yeah, that's right. Get 20% off free shipping and a free travel bag by using the code TONY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off free shipping and a free travel bag with the code Tony at manscaped.com. Why'd it just have to be my name for the code? That's hilarious. Why couldn't it be kill? Everything else is kill Tony. It's like, oh, oh, uh, shave your balls, there's Tony. Get Tony. That's the show. Tony for your manscaping needs. Your mom would be proud. You know. And by the way, that seriously is. They sent us packages. It's, it's an great. unbelievably great product. Yeah. I think you used the uh, the ball spray as cologne at one point. No, you I, no, I used cologne. You used, the, you used the ball spray. No, you used cologne as ball spray. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, you did. No, and you my shaved friend. your mustache using the manscape. I did. I, I, I did. <laughs> I shaved all my facial hair using manscape. Because it works for both. It's a regular trimmer. Anyway, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and it won't nick your All face. right, can we take this from the top? Let's restart. Who wants to restart tonight's episode? I'm just kidding. We're already in it, guys. We're in it to win it. I'm excited about uh, tonight's show. Uh, every single week, we have uh, one of the funniest comedians in the world on this week's No Different. His new album, Jabba, yes. right now is out. Uh, it, it, he's one of the, our favorite comedians on the planet, a real fucking comedy store guy, a monster, perhaps one of the nicest, friendliest human beings in comedy store history, and also one of the funniest. Make some noise for my great friend, the great Steve Simone, everybody. Uh oh. Thanks, buddy. Hey, guys. Hell yes. Steve Simone, the new album Java is out. Yeah, it just came out. I'm excited. Hey, can, I, can I tell them what I, I told you earlier, my little guarantee? Yes, please. I said that tonight, by doing this show, his album's at number three right now, I said that we are going to push it to number one yeah. tonight. On iTunes. The hey. Kill Tony you. Bump. <laughs> you guys want to be part of a great episode or what? Let's fucking do it. I'm excited. Give me one of your bumps. I, I like it. The Kill Tony <laughs> Bump. For those of you listening to the live stream, go by Jabba right now and uh, thank us later. It's unbelievable. What's that, is there a reason for the name uh, without yeah. spoiling anything? Yeah. I, well, it was just what my 
fat older brother called my fatter dad. Oh. And he had no <laughs> idea what it meant. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that's great. That's interesting. <laughs> Job of the hut. Yep. Um, also, also a little fun fact. Our friend uh, Gino at Speedweed, uh, some of you may have filled out on your way in on a little iPad. He's giving away $500 worth of weed tonight. That's Whoa. fucking great. How exciting is that? Only in California, right? Oh, you guys don't like weed. Yeah. All right, cool. Fuck you. Take those people's names off the iPad, Gino. <laughs> let's, give it to, let's give it to Aphrodite. Look at her yeah. bright spirit over there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. Next week, Reagan Watkins is on panel, and then Jeff Ross the week after that, and then Brian Holtzman the week Brian after that. Oh, so the man, schedule's man. filled. That's it's very insane. exciting. And uh, right. hey, look, it's David Deary, everybody. Mm-hmm. Look at that guy getting shit done. All right, so let's just jump right into it, right? Uh, Steve, you know there's a band on this show? Do you guys know there's a fucking band? The best damn band in the land. Every single episode, they commit to uh, being characters. Sometimes it's the return of one of their famous characters that we've seen before. Sometimes it's the debut of a brand new character. We never know what they're going to be. They always stay in character the whole time. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the best damn band in the land. It's the Kill Tony Band, Jeremiah Watkins. Joelberg, Joel Jimenez, Chroma Chris. Uh oh. Here we go. Whoa! Look how legit this is. He's a real postman. For the first time ever. Right? These are brand new characters. This is really exciting. Oh, I got their names written down. I like this. Wow, you guys are postmen. This is so exciting. You're a really old postman, huh? Wow. Very elderly postman who, who's dressed for both the cold and the warm <laughs> at the same time. It's like if it's hot, he's got it. If it's cold, he's got a little something for that too. Right on the top. It says here your name is Walter. Is that correct? Yes, Walter Fig. <laughs> Walter Fig. I've been a postman for 1,900 years. <laughs> you sounds, have. sounds like an Indian. <laughs> yeah, why, do you, why do you sound like you're Native American? <laughs> you a Native American postman? I am not a Native American. <laughs> Tony, I am 100% Caucasian. (laughs) Why would an Indian man lie about being a Caucasian? I just got my 23andMe test results back. (laughs) I am 100% European, Tony. Wow. This is very exciting, Walter. Well, I'm glad you're going to be with us. Clearly next to you, you have uh, Sully Sullenberger from the Miracle (laughs) on the Hudson. (laughs) And it says here your name is uh, Merv. Merv, Merv the per- the ma- mailman. Merv the mailman, Tony. <laughs> Merv, <laughs> Merv the perv. Ma- mailman, Tony. Merv, ma- Merv the mailman. <laughs> All right, Merv the mailman. He is not a perv, and I am not a Native American. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow you are becoming more Native American as the show goes on. No, the sun starts to set, and so does my. <laughs> So That's exactly what a Native American would say right I there. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then it says here, back here, that uh, your name is Carl Malone? <laughs> is this correct? That's right, Tony. <laughs> and this is, <laughs> this is a mailman. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so you're like, so, so, so I, I get it. So you saw <laughs> that. <laughs> So you, when you knew that you were going to be a mailman, you're like, oh, okay, I'm just going to, you know, surfer it up with a wig and uh, mailman it up. That's what I think a mailman is. I'm going to give my Mexican body <laughs> blonde, Ric Flair-like hair, put a fisherman's hat over it, and then I'm ready to be a mailman. I thought the mixture of the two would just breed comedy, Tony. <laughs> 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 Breathe comedy? What? I'm oh dying. Oh my god. Okay, so you guys see this is this isn't even the show. This is just the beginning <laughs> this is the very beginning of the show. We have mailmen. 
Which, by the way, Walter over there. Uh, Many moons ago when I started my male <laughs> career. <laughs> I realized this was a career for me. Happy Memorial Day, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, happy Memorial Day indeed. Nobody better to wish us a happy Memorial Day than a Native American mailman. Uh, who, will, by the way, uh, I believe uh, he is a big fan, uh, which reminds me, you can order right now by your local postal delivery the new uh, Reagan and Watkins album. You can pre-order it. It's on sale now. And it comes out June 7th with the pre-party here on June the 6th, the night before. Right here in the main room, uh, Jeremiah and uh, Pat Reagan, are the two founding members of the band um, here on Kill Tony, have an amazing album coming out. We're super excited. And again, they're on panel next week, so we'll see what happens. But tonight it's Mailmen, Steve Simone, Red Band, and a bucket of destiny is here filled with... Uh, Due to this massive uh, sellout turnout, we limited the bucket to uh, 30 uh, people tonight, and uh, they all know who they are uh, in some way or another, and their names are in the bucket. If I pull your name out, you get 60 seconds of uninterrupted stand-up comedy time. You know your time's up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That's adorable. Wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Heck yeah. There you go. That's what that sounds like. Okay, you guys ready to start the show? There we go. Very good. And then after the 60 seconds, we find out more about their life, about what makes them a real human being, what makes us all different. You guys excited? Put your hands together for your first comedian. He goes by the name of Brendan Crick. Here he is, Brendan Crick. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Um, I just discovered this new genre of porn. It's my favorite, but I'm going to warn everybody in advance. It has a wildly aggressive name. Uh, it's called Black Ambush Pornography. <laughs> Stings in the ears, I agree, but I'll explain. Everyone will be back on board. Uh, black Ambush Pornography, what it is, is they get a white porn actress, and they sit her down, and they interview her about what the scene's going to be like. And then the whole time they have a white porn actor chilling in the corner with his shirt off and it's implied that's going to be the dude in the scene. And then they finish the interview and they're like, all right, let's bring in the guy. And the girl panics and she's like, wait, isn't that the guy? And they go, oh no. And then they bring in a black guy and then they zoom the camera in super tight on her face to see if she's racist or not. At least I assume it's porn. I'm not sure, because I always just come then. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Brendan Crick. <laughs> ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba. Hell yeah, Thank Brendan. You. That was very fun. Look Thank at you. you very You're much. an adorable little thing, aren't you? <laughs> you I'm a very little... small man, Tony. Look at you. You're such a cutie pie. <laughs> It's like, true. Thank you. Thank I love you so it. much. Let's, let me check in with Walter over here real quick. He's Could like, I tell you my favorite category of porn? <laughs> yes, please. Male on male. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. He doesn't even crack a smile after that. It's so goddamn... <laughs> the most goddamn Native American thing I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. <laughs> I'm not smiling at all. <laughs> what confident eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> like you, I feel like so you would know about confident eye contact. <laughs> the fuck are we talking about, Brendan? <laughs> Look at you, you little fucking George Costanza, Danny DeVito, fucking little burrito of just white mm -hmm. guy, huh? Look yeah. at you. Wow. You some type of like little mad scientist or something? <laughs> no, I'm very dumb. Really? Very unintelligent oh, man. That's surprising. I am small and fat, though. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, wait, Walter, go ahead. Yeah, he is so tiny, it would only take one stamp to mail him. <laughs> <laughs> is that a real category of porn, like what you talked about? Yeah, it is. Wow. And is it most people racist, or...? I, it's more staged than I make it sound in the bit. Like, uh, what do you type in to find that type of porn? Um, I, I just found it randomly one day. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> it... It's typing in black porn, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. No, I know that's how I find all my porn. It's just I go to <laughs> randomporn.com and just fucking... Uh, yeah, I think it was a Pornhub recommend. I think it, the algorithm decided I would like it. Uh -huh. So they, they sent that to me. All right. Well, Brendan, is this your first time on the show? 
a uh, second time. It oh, was okay. like a year ago. Oh, that's fun. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Well, uh, how's life been for you since then? Uh, it's been much better. Um, the whole interview last time was about how my dick wasn't working, and now it works. Oh, uh, what happened? Wow. Thank you. Did we find out why your dick wasn't working? Um, I don't know. I went on Zoloft, which is somehow ma- is making it harder, which is the opposite. My doctor told me that's weird. It's making it harder <laughs> in, a, in a good way or a bad yeah, way? You well, lost before me. Before, I was going soft all the time. Uh. Um, this would seem less weird if anyone but me remembered. It kind of <laughs> seems like, huh, he came here with an agenda. <laughs> he wanted to no, it's fine. We want to hear about this. So now <laughs> it's too hard? Uh, it's not too hard. It's just... Are you, is it hard right now? It, not, not right now, no. It's been getting like a baseline level of hard, which for me is big news. Baseline oh. level of hard? Yeah, this where it's like always a little ready to go. Is that no, what you're it's just about? like when it's, when it's normal for it to be hard, it does, which is out of the ordinary for me. So the fact that it's good is bad. It's not bad. It's just uh, it weirdest makes me feel pl- uneasy. Weirdest you know? place you've gotten a boner that you can remember recently? Um, Anywhere? Uncomfortable? This was when I was a ch- I was a child, but it was the Holocaust Museum in Washington, <laughs> D.C. Wow! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> was it the Anne Frank section of Come the? Come on. No. What it was is um. No, this was like eighth grade. Um, if any has the anyone been there? There's this pit with TVs at the bottom. And um, there was this girl I had a crush on who was looking down into it. And I came up next to her and I was looking down her shirt because I was in eighth grade. <sighs> and I, I just got rock hard and then she turned and bumped into it. Oh, my God. Uh. And that's when I realized that it was like Dr. Mangala footage and shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, Walter. I don't believe this story because I don't think he was ever tall enough to look down a girl's <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I'm a very uh, small man. Yes, you are. And, and it is incredible that you have decided to dress like a Chucky doll tonight. I mean, it's, for a small man, you would think you'd wear bigger clothes. That is a, just so adorable what you are squozing into. Is that fr- off of a teddy bear or something um, like that? Like you're dressed. This is from. Has uh, anyone ever told you that before that you dress like a fucking teddy bear? <laughs> it's build a bear. No, this is from uh, Peter Manning for the man 5'8 and under. If they're listening, please sponsor me. Okay. It's a small men's clothing website. Uh, sponsor me too, you for me too, what? Me too. I'll take it. He shops uh, the big and tall section of Baby Gap. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Walter. <laughs> I love it. Uh, is this how you dress? You dress like this a lot? Um, yeah, is this bad? I thought this was good. <laughs> <laughs> Some intense... Ooh. How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, like seven years. Seven years. All here in Los Angeles? In what no. village? <laughs> in r- um, I moved from Philly last year. Oh, Philly. Very mm-hmm. good. What was that postal code? Uh... Fuck. What the fuck? Do you, you remember know, Walter? Normal? Walter's counting on his hand. This isn't a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> anyway, uh, mm-hmm. so what do you do? Uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I work at a credit union out here. Credit union. Mm-hmm. Oh, fun. That's fun. Steve, you're from uh, you're from Philadelphia. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, where'd you grow up? Oh, I grew up in Lancaster, PA, and then I moved to Philly to do stand up like two years before I moved here. There you go. Mm-hmm. Do you keep anything in that little pocket <laughs> on your shirt? What do you keep in there? A better shirt? <laughs> uh, no, Jesus. Ju- just a nipple. Mm. <laughs> that is that is a hard nipple. Does the uh, has the uh, wow. Zoloft made your nipples harder? Maybe it does. Hmm. All Maybe right. It, yeah. Very good. <laughs> Brendan, what's your love life like? Uh, it's my wife is dead. Okay. Oh, oh my goodness, oh. Walter. <laughs> Walter, was she Native American? Two? <laughs> that for me or him? She was Italian. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Brendan, uh, last date you went on, what was that like? Um, it was like a month and a half ago. We uh-huh. uh, got dinner and uh, went back to my house. And Wow, you got dinner and then went back to your house. Where'd you have dinner at? Uh, an Italian. It was actually a place Red Band had recommended to me last Wha- time. Wow, <laughs> oh, look at that. Red Band. Knows. The Olive Garden, Ita- huh? No. <laughs> the Monte Carlo <laughs> Deli. Was it Pinocchio's? Uh, no, it was um, it's Olive Centani. Garden. Oh, yeah, Christmas. yeah. That place yeah. in Burbank. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah. great. Wow. Did you and get the lasagna? Uh, yeah, I did get the lasagna. Good for you. That was good really good. You. Wow. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Conversation has five layers. Uh, <laughs> 
so then uh, dinner goes good. Were you guys like getting? Were you guys like drinking at the Italian restaurant? Uh, I think she may have had like a beer or something. I don't drink. Uh huh. And then so then you're like, hey, you want to come back to my place? And what? What was like your pitch? Um, I said, uh, like, do you want to walk around Burbank? And she said, no. Do you want to <laughs> go back woman. to your house or something? I was like, okay. And then we she got... she suggested your place. Yeah. yeah. Wow, look at you, you fucking little fucking Ewok well, I mean, pimp. <laughs> I, I fuck like once a year, but when it happens, it's not really Bar- my doing. <laughs> <laughs> Cover in hair and just rape the first person you find. <laughs> I only fuck once a year, Tony, but when I do, uh, <laughs> hello, <laughs> don't, g- don't get near me. <laughs> wow. Once so you took her back to your place, and then what? You guys play Twister or something like that? You fucking, oh, red foot, yellow, <laughs> or something? <laughs> uh, I was right. like, uh, do you want to like watch TV or something? And she was again like, no. Wow, that's such room, a crazy so. line. Do you want to watch TV or something? I don't remember. <laughs> like you actually asked her? Were you just sitting there in the, in the couch? Do you want to watch TV or something? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I guess. And then she (laughs) said no. She said no to that. And then what? Just wow, chicka, wow, wow. She's like, I see you're already hard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she observed my nipple through my shirt, so then it was on. Man, so then what? You just fucking go unprotected right in. No Uh, condom on you. No way, no how. (laughs) I don't know how to riff this. <laughs> no, don't riff it. Just tell the truth. Condom uh, or no condom? Yeah, I used a condom. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. See, it was that easy. You just got to keep going. So condom, how long did you last? Um, well, I lasted. I didn't come, so I lasted what? forever. I don't really come. You don't, you don't really, really come? come? Yeah, <laughs> oh, I want to beg the differ. Who thinks we can make this guy come tonight, huh? <laughs> You see these people? They all believe in you. <laughs> Tony, challenge accepted. Carl <laughs> uh, Malone has, for some reason, without, <laughs> without even being asked, has accepted the challenge. Walter, let's check in with Walter. Yeah. He, he might be able to do some type of old spell on him to make him come. <laughs> I, I, I think I can make this kid come. Expected <laughs> delivery two to three days. <laughs> so, so, like... When you masturbate, there's sometimes you don't uh, come when you masturbate and you just sit there. And well, I come when I masturbate, but like universally when I fuck, I don't come. Do you ever do the old porn star trick where you're like, oh, I'm going to come and then you just start jerking off for like five minutes mm-hmm. over? Yeah, or I'll like be like, oh, yes, I came and then like hide the condom. God, I wish I had this problem so <laughs> bad, man. You, uh, yeah. One time I snorted a line of Lipitor. I was hard for a week. Nice. So when you do come, is it come out like curdled or like 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 yogurt? Oh, oh, okay, Red Band. Okay, okay. The one it is, that, the it one is not fresh. It's <laughs> not right. Wait, what do you mean it's not? It's fresh. a little yellow. Ugh. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, it's a little yellow. Oh, you guys are yellow. fucking disgusting. Right? What the? Fuck? You guys are gross. It's like, ooh, this was last week's come. Like, oh my god, you guys need to go for jogs and jerk off yeah. more often. You're, oh, you're, I do. Your your cum doesn't look like hearing aid earwax. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right, Walter, this is getting out of control. Brendan, we had fun with you. Good luck. Keep uh. Keep, Thank you very much. Good job, buddy. Keep coming back, Brendan Crick. Hey, yeah, Brendan, grab a, uh, you like ice cream? Yeah, there's some ice cream in there grab for you. Some grab some ice cream out of a cooler. One of the fun things, uh, Steve Simone brought a cooler full of ice cream treats for the people. <laughs> oh, looks like he went with a little ice cream cone. Brendan Crick looks like he normally has ice cream. Look so. how erect that ice cream cone is. There he goes. What? Wow. Erect. Oh, Jesus. Dave Deary, look at that. Leaving uh, briefcases out there. Oh, my goodness. Wow, great job. Wow. All right, you guys having fun out there? You get it? That was Brendan Crick. Back to the bucket we go. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Casey Hensel. Casey Hensel. Here we go. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here comes Casey, everyone. Casey Hensel. Doing every day in every possible way. One more time for Casey Hensel, everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm uh, excited to be here with Tony Redband and Steve Simone. Been a big fan since the beginning. This guy created uh, 
Joe Rogan's podcast. Now he's sitting here and about to make fun of me. I've been coming down, uh, checking out. I'm a stay-at-home dad. And uh, this guy's beautiful right here. How you doing? But uh, I sit here and, uh, you know, would sit in the background watching you guys, and I'd be criticizing, watching, laughing at you guys, you know, saying, like, that's easy. So I thought I'd just come up here and see how uh, not easy it is and awkward it is to be able to make uh, myself feel awkward. I was back there going, boom, boom, boom. So I thought I'd just give it a shot and uh, come up and say hello. It was the most awkward part was when the lady said, are you one of the comics? And I said, you could call it that tonight. So I don't know if the cat's meowing or if I really went short of a minute. You're still short of a minute. Jesus. Do a joke. The fuck are you doing? What, every joke? Who does that? Whatever you do, don't do that. Well, I have a lot of material. So I figured I'd give it a shot, so here I am giving it a shot. My time should be up here any second. Uh, Always wanted that. to know what it would be like to do comedy, and I guess I'm doing it. Well, uh, I have to get. I just wanted no, to get over the nerves. That's my time. Thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to get over the nerves. I couldn't really tell. You have no have zero no jokes. jokes. You don't have any joke that. Yeah, that every joke that I know is like try one. women love to go to church because they heard Jesus. Wait, I mean, what? not stolen jokes, the, like jokes you, you, you... Hold on, let, hold on. Let's just slow it down a bit. Let's check in with Walter over here. She, this is my problem with the white man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Is, I thought you were Caucasian. Is, is they feel entitled to things that they do not deserve. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the truth comes out. That's a Native American mailman over there. I'm 100% European, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Casey, let's talk about it. Don't be so comfortable. Get back up to the front. I was just trying to stand out of the way. So you come to the show a lot. You, you, is that what you said? You've been yeah, to the show? Yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Not we don't even do show. it on Tuesdays no, and Thursdays. You're not making any I'm sense. I'm the comedy store. You're really you breaking, under the, the you're, you're breaking under questioning here. For a guy that looks like Stephen Avery, I'm surprised you would do that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know who that is, but I know I look Of course you don't know who it is, Casey. You're a guy that just signed up for a show and then did nothing once given the opportunity. <laughs> did less than nothing. No, I don't think it is nothing because for me it's just getting over the nerves. I have a lot of material. I think uh, I know what I'm doing. What but nerves? The I fuck are you get over the Casey, the Casey uh, how long have you sang for a Smash Mouth cover band? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. Casey, don't you ever have you ever not spoken in front of an audience before? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I've never. I used to play in a band, but I never. What did you do in the band? Played the guitar. And sang. You played the guitar and sang. Can you give us a, an example of some of your singing? Can you s just sing us not a line? A guitar, no. Give me a tempo. What do you mean? <laughs> Red band. <laughs> Hey, now, I got no jokes. I'm going to go up. I got no jokes. Yeah, is, is that how you sing? Just like, I thought I would just fight my fears today. I Did not Julie write a song for this? Are the emo kids here? What I was figuring I would bring a plenty of material for you guys. So. Wait, what? I, I got... Arms, you guys got yeah, you don't. Your arms are fine. Come on, your You're arms right. are fine. No, it's the rest of your body no, that's, that's weird. That's not what we would make fun of about you. We would make fun of your face. <laughs> your actual head. Walter. Can I just say someone who walks for a living, his calves are very impressive. You do have impressive calves. What do you do for work, Casey? I'm a real estate agent. You're a real estate agent. And I could tell because it literally says on your polo, I sell real estate. Which I think all the biggest real estate agents, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's what they rock, right? <laughs> like, do you sell like big houses or just little small houses like Bedrock or some, whatever? Beach. <laughs> uh, so I work like, for Engel and Volkers, one of the biggest luxury brands in the world. Oh. Say it again. I work for Engel and Volkers, one of the biggest luxury brands in the world. We sell yachts, luxury real estate. Wow. And, uh, wow. wow. Can you sell, try, to sell me, uh, try to sell me something right now? Uh, I got to pre-qualify for you first. I'm not sure that... Uh, oh, you already you know, got I'm me. Yeah, I'm already pre-qualified. I like it. I don't waste my time with anything under... Uh, wow. Yeah, wow. You, you, you clearly wasted our time here oh, tonight. I love that. I love that you save your time, though. I don't waste time. Not my own, at least. Well, Casey, can what? you tell us any fun facts about you? Anything that we might be interested to know? Let, uh, let us try to fucking write a joke for your lazy ass. I was a stay-at-home dad for two years. Because stay-at-home dad for two years. What happened? The babies died. No, I, oh. it was the hardest thing I you ever You lost your home. 
He said he was a stay-at-home dad for two years. What'd they do, run away? No, because my wife had good insurance and a good job, so it was easier for me to stay home and be self-employed. Than the mom's got a good job. Yeah. And you just sell real estate. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, what does she do? She does inside sales. They do layoffs for big companies. Like wow. They're firing and hiring people. Wow. Is your shirt size Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> Man, I really like the oh, other guy that was back there better. Oh, this guy will this guy will fuck the shit out of you. Be careful, Casey. Uh, man, so you're a stay-at-home dad, and uh, when you say for two years, I'm still confused. Why why were you just for two years, or it's been two years? Because they start doing preschool, you know, and they you start being able to get back to work. And what do, do you things. do when the kids go to preschool? I, I, I volunteer at the food pantry, and then I go to my office. You volunteer at the food pantry? Is that what you call eating at the food pantry? No, I do deliveries, and I drive. And, you know, you I try do to deliveries, and you drive. Yeah, I was an idiot in the beginning of my life. and uh, Like what? What are you talking sober. about? What are you I, talking about? I went to prison for three years. Yeah, was, here we I, go. Uh, now ooh. we're fucking cooking. Tell us about your prison. What, what was that? I was what? just a drug addict in Arizona. They don't fuck around. What were you addicted to? Uh, everything. Wow. I thought I was a rock star, and I just became a drug addict. Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, buddy. All right, Casey. Well, uh, you know, I'm, no, glad, I'm glad we were hopefully able to help you face your fears, uh, but I don't think you really got to experience, you know, you just came up here and just really talked about being up Hey, here. I almost ran and hid, so I don't give a fuck. For me, right. I feel better about a getting lot of people. A lot of people have taken that route probably. Last week, someone ran and hid, and he called his name, and I almost came up. I was like, I'll pretend I'm Tom. Oh, don't wow. do that. Yeah, no, so you, you're... Yeah, I thought you were throw nice. you right out of here. You naturally still think like a piece of shit, Casey, oh. even though... <laughs> Thank you. Steve's a Casey. good guy. Steve's the, Steve's the good cop to my yeah. bad cop. Oh, you must be able Casey. to find some type Are you going to do this again? You face your fears. Uh, maybe not at Kill Tony, but are you going to find an open mic yeah. and do yeah, something like comedy. this? I Let's ask that. the audience. Do you think he should do it again? I think he should. <laughs> if you want to do it, do it. Yeah. No, I mean, I already got a job in my career. I just want to do it because I love it. I love comedy. I don't know if I'll ever be you know, doing it on stage, but... I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks, you know. I love it. Fuck yeah. There you go. Sure. Casey Hensel, everybody. Buddy. Grab only one of the ice creams. Yeah, grab an ice cream, Casey. Grab grab, grab an ice cream. I don't care if you're on a fucking diet. It's a Monday. Who has more fun than us on a Monday? How many of you think he should break his diet tonight? There you go. It's a no-brainer. Guy lies to the very end. Oh, I'm on a diet. Yeah, sure. Yeah, all my fat friends are on diets. Never yeah. ends. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Brandon J. Bryan, everyone. Brandon J. from the farthest from the back possible corner. spot. Hey! For the next. One more time for Brandon J. Bryant. Uh, I'm in college. I'm a college student, and I'm about to graduate. And I'm surprised that I made it this far because uh, I grew up in Arkansas. And uh, that's where I first went to uh, school, where I first learned how to read and write. And it was hard because as I was learning how to read and write, so was the teacher, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, part of college that I'm not about is uh, I'm not a frat guy. Uh, there's a lot of differences between me and a frat guy, right? Like, uh, I really like uh, rap, and uh, frat guys like rape. Yeah, it's a one-letter difference. It's a one-letter difference. It's a hell of a difference. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I'm not in a frat. I've actually, uh, I had sex for the first time uh, this year. Yeah, four months ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, as I was doing comedy uh, as a virgin, all my jokes were about me being a virgin, right? And then uh, when I had sex, boom, put that thing in. Jokes, gone. I was like, oh, fuck. And I gotta start writing. And uh, after I had sex, yeah. Oh, fuck. All right. There you go. Brandon J. Bryant. Hello. You've been on this show before, right? I have, yeah. I remember you. What, what did we talk about last time you were on? What was a big thing with you? Well, last time I didn't have sex, so... Oh, so you, were, then, you were a virgin. Yeah. And yeah. now you're not a virgin. Yeah. Look at that. By the way, can we just take a moment to acknowledge Kill Tony changes people's <laughs> lives? 
Last yeah. time I was on, Tony, I had never had sex before. Now I'm a fucking... I, 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 don't, know, I don't know what's going on. Well, yeah, how'd it happen? Walk us through it. Uh, oh, how to happen? Real quick, let's check in with Walter, who uh, uh, has something he wants to say. I just feel like this guy looks like he teaches surf lessons to Hitler Youth. <laughs> you do? No, no. So, uh, how'd you lose your virginity? Let's talk about it. You ate another woman out. <laughs> I, I, I liked it. I liked it. I, I liked it. I got it. I got it. Um, no. Uh, you scissored. <laughs> No, uh, uh, I was in uh, I was in Big Bear with a bunch of friends. Yeah, uh, Big Bear, I bet. Like a cabin Big Bear is how the story starts and ends, by the way. <laughs> One time I was attacked by a big bear in the woods. Stole my entire mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Brandon. Uh, yeah, it was just it was just a bunch of friends and coworkers, and then it kind of just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us more about it. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Don't be afraid. W- what, do, what do you want to know? Who was it? It was a coworker. Yeah, yeah it was one of my. It was one of my coworkers. Yeah. Wh- also, was, what do you do uh, for work again? I work at a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it was like my friends, like ex, or like now we're like Eskimo brothers. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. Jesus. Ugh. Speaking of Eskimo brothers, Walter has something uh, he wants to say. After you had sex with this girl. Did she say the only condition for my reason to have sex with you if you wear my pants for the rest of your life? <laughs> oh God! I didn't even see that. Look at those. You have women's pants and a and a m- true men's shirt uh, on a what appears to be uh, some type of. I've never seen a young man more built like Homer Simpson in my entire life. Oh, oh like you seem like you should. You have a healthy face, and oh. then it just drips off right yeah. from there, yeah. right from the chin down. It just gets. Just gets a little wackadoodle. Um, so uh, yeah, so it happened at uh, what, like a big house, and you had uh, you had a room, mm-hmm. and you just took her in there, mm-hmm. and then what happened? Well, I didn't get to it, but uh, <laughs> afterwards, I swear to God, she said, uh, she goes, she looks at me, and she goes, huh? She goes, uh, never did all the work before. That's Wait, what she told me. Say that again. She says, "I never did all the work before. I've never done all the work before." I never did all the work before. Yeah. That's what she said. That's what she said. Literally. What did you just do? Like lay there and go ah, the whole time? Pretty Wait. Much. So what happened? You laid on your back. Mm-hmm. Did she know you were a virgin? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Did she find out that night? Did she, no. Oh, uh, no. We were like friends, I guess, before. So you were friends before she knew, that. Yeah. So then you lay there. She lays you on a bed, right? <laughs> and you you have all your clothes off at this point. Yeah. So you're laying there naked. She's naked. Yeah. Right? And what's going on? Well, take us, really walk us through this. Nice and slow. So I want to figure this out. I didn't have this many questions until you said she said she did all the work. I mean, hey. Now I want to know how much work she really did and if she deserves an equal pay rate. (laughs) Go ahead. I mean, it was... You're laying there, you're naked, she's naked, you're a virgin, so you're already basically about to come at this point. Nothing's even happened, you're just like, oh my god, she's naked, I'm naked, fuck, 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 fuck. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that long, so it was like... Your dick or the... <laughs> sex. Did you let her put anything in your mail slot? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long did you last? Like, five Four or five minutes. Condom? Wow. No condom? Yeah, condom. Yeah. Condom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so she put a condom. She put the condom on, or no, you? I, I, I did. Yeah. You did while you were laying there, or before you laid down. Before that. He before. Wore, so you're he, standing next. He to He wore the it to the date. <laughs> <laughs> you're standing there. You're putting a condom on, and then you just fucking, <laughs> you just lay down like that, like a gentleman. <laughs> And then you literally, she crawls on top of you, rides it for a few minutes, and then, and then can you describe to this audience how you announced that you were coming? Do a little act out of your... <laughs> it's been a long time since a lot of us lost our virginity. It's been recent for you. You have the freshest memory. I, don't, I was just like, ah, uh, that, that... That's it? Yeah. Just like, wow. What you just did with it, ah, uh, uh, ah. Uh. Like, yeah, you didn't even say sorry? <laughs> <laughs> and then what did she say? She literally goes, "Wow, I've never had to do all That's the work what she before." Said. That's what wow. she said. Yeah. 
Oh and I was like, uh, I didn't know what to say to that. So I was like, uh, okay. yeah, it's like five minutes of work, lady. Get it together. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> Jesus. Well, I've never had to do How big everything. Was this woman? Like, like the, the joke that I have is like, I had to do everything. Well, no, that, that, <laughs> that, that's the joke is like, I'm, I'm like a feminist because I made her do all the work. You're a feminist? Like, because I made her do all the work. Oh. So, yeah, so. No, well, that's did you, a, did yeah. you find your dick cherry? Did you look for it after? What? Oh, come on, Brian. Why do you have to do Nothing. that? A dick cherry. Red come on. There's, there's no, innocent did you? people here in this audience. There's nice, innocent people. How big was this woman? Was she, she, Walter, she was a Walter's, woman, right? Walter's wife is sitting in the front row right now. No, every time. Every time. Margarita, I haven't seen you in 30 stand years. Up, t- stand up. Take a bow for this audience behind you. Walter's Pocahontas. wife here. Yeah, you. There she is, everybody. Look at that. <laughs> Clearly, a, a full-blown Native American couple. Whoa, she just flashed her tits? Yeah, I like your style, lady. Heck, yeah, this party's getting started. Woo-wee! I Margar- think I- Marguerite told me she was dead in a letter 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen her since. <laughs> That's right, I forgot your wife was dead. I forgot all about that. All right. Wow, so you lost your virginity. Anything else crazy that we need to know about before uh, this whole thing comes to I know you can't wait to get to that fucking ice cream. He keeps looking at me for some... He's looking at the ice cream. Well, I don't know. Should, is it worth bringing up uh, the show at the Comedy Theater with, uh, with William? Sure. All right, well... I was, I was, I was oh, I forgot who you were until you yeah, said that, actually. A, Sorry, go ahead. Wow. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I hosted a show at this place in Huntington, and then... Uh, William was on the show. William Montgomery. Yeah, and uh, he he brought in uh, some beer, and the guy told him to. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, he's like, hey, get that out of here, and then he snuck it in, and like the guy like freaked out and kicked wi- him off. William told him the guy told William not to bring beer in. Yeah. He, William's like, all and right, he, he, and then William so went and so snuck he, beer no, no, in. So he put it. Under, he had like a big overcoat. Of course he did. And he put it under the. And I'm yes. Like, I'm like, so then what happened? So I'm like, ah, oh, William Montgomery, blah blah, and then like the owner of the venue was like. What the fuck is that beer? And I was like, how do you, how do you even get that in here? And then he like freaked out on him and kicked him off the property. Yeah. Wow, that's yelled a, at that's me. Just, that's a no, really bad story, by the way. Said, is it, that's why I said, is it worth it? Yeah, no, it wasn't worth you, it. You told you just you'll told know, us a, you'll you, know when it's worth it. You, you told us a story that did not happen to you. Well, yeah, I, mean, I was I was. <laughs> you it told was us like, a William Monk. One was, more interesting thing about me. Is I, ever, was, uh, I was at a place one well, night with William Montgomery, and was, here's what he did. Well, the, 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 guy, the guy. You guys was, ever heard of uh, Jim Morrison? <laughs> that's, he how was, in, uh, that's how interesting William is. No, that people are now reverting to William's stories. The guy, the guy was pissed because like it was like me and my friend's show. So well, I can't like, wait to ask. I can't wait to talk. Uh, you you have set a new uh, excitement in the air because I can't wait to ask William about this later on when he's. On. I mean, it was it was it was a fun show. Yeah, it was, it was good times. It Hell yeah. On it, yeah. There you go, Brandon. Look at you. You're part of the family up here. Uh, you're not a virgin anymore. Uh, stand-up's going good, right? Yeah, yeah. How long have you been doing it now? Uh, about a year in June. year in June. Yeah. Well, job. congratulations. There you go. First year done. Brandon J. Bryan, everybody. Grab some ice cream, Brandon. Get some. Brandon, get ice cream. Get ice cream. Son of a bitch. Everybody tries Son to pretend like bitch. they don't want ice cream. I know. Everybody's eating ice cream tonight. I don't care if you're diabetic. <laughs> I prefer it if you are. Yeah. Just how what many, I'm into. How many of you in this audience, some of you I'm sure know about this show, how many of you like it when comedians do good on this show? <laughs> how many of you like it when comedians do bad on this show? Wow. Wow. You see that? You thought you were surrounded by nice people, but you're not. That's crazy. It's a bunch of pure evil in this room right now. This looks like a new name. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Cameron Tory, everyone. Cameron Tory. Here we go. Yeah. Here comes Cameron. Let me know. One more time. Cameron Tory. There we go. How many of you guys have Instagram? Everybody? All right. So I was on Instagram earlier, and I saw this meme. And I get a little too excited when I see shit 
that looks too good to be true. I saw this meme that said they're paying $380 an hour, an hour to help build the wall. And I was just talking shit about how fucked up it was. But 380 an hour, that's 15 grand a week, 60 grand a month. That's a lot of goddamn money. And I was praying to God and the other day, and I was like, I need a better situation. And I saw this, and shit started getting real to me. I was like, oh, fuck, 380 an hour? And I started planning it out, and then I hit up my homie Jose. I was like, hey, bro, so you know they're paying 380 an hour? He was like, well, fuck it, fool. I got a social dog. We'll take my Silverado. We'll go down there. We'll make a day out of it, fool, you know? <laughs> shit, we'll get it cracking. And then he calls me. He's outside, and I was like, oh, Jose. It was a meme, you know. Wow. You want to finish? Go ahead, finish. Huh? You want to finish it? Yeah, it's finished. Oh, that was it. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, all right. Okay. Hell yeah. Nice to meet you, Cameron. This is your first time on the show, right? On this show, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been on stand-up? A little over a year. A little over a year. Where are you from? I'm from uh, L.A. Oh, Cool. That's not what he means. <laughs> what, do I, what do I mean? Mark and Ben. We're, we're, we're Sherman we're Oaks, to be exact. Sherman Oaks. Four, two, three. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sherman Oaks. We're, you're curious. You said Jose in the, the story, so we're wondering, like, where you're from. Oh, where I'm from, like, my gang? Okay, sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't gang bang, man. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that guy. I'm, All right, I'm black, well. I know. Wait, you also yeah. know Sherman Oaks is not L.A., right? Technically, it is. Fuck, man. You're arguing it. with a bunch of guys that know the postal codes, Cameron. These are real Listen, mailmen up here. I have your area code. When I ship shit, right when I here. order shit from anywhere else, it always says Los Angeles, California. It never says Sherman Oaks when I put in my zip code. Wow. So I mean, hey, uh, uh, Cameron, I think you're taking us all a little bit too seriously up here. You got to relax a little bit. <laughs> Uh, we're just having fun. Everything's yeah, okay. I got a I got a stabby vibe right away when I started <laughs> talking to you. Uh, everything's okay, Cameron. So, uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, right now, I, I hustle. You know. Yeah. What are you doing to hustle? What's the hustle? Uh, I sell things. Wow. Jeez, Louise, you are as shady as you seem. No, I no. <laughs> I sell cars, and, uh, <laughs> and then I, I, I wholesale <laughs> certain things. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> you sell cars? What kind, what's the last car you sold? Mm, a Chevy Colorado. A Chevy Colorado. Yeah. yeah. Chevy Colorado. I notice everything you sell starts with the letter C. <laughs> cars, Chevy, Colorado. Cocaine. Ah, huh? is that where we're going? Oh, we got Concha. that face the cocaine dealers make. Hey, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's only it's a famous thing. Only co cocaine dealers know how to make that face you just made. Uh, what's the craziest thing you've ever sold or resold? Mm. <laughs> Come on, there must be a good one. A stolen MacBook. Yeah. That, that actually was my friend's, and I didn't know because I got it from another friend. Oh. And then when I put it on Craigslist and he saw the serial number, oh. he was like, Did you get this from Shane? Oh. And I was like, Nah, man, I bought it. And he was like, No, because Shane was at my house and I couldn't find my laptop. And now. Oh you're my selling God. It. What so an then, asshole. Did, did you still sell it or did he end up getting it? You're, you're no, just like, you want to. No, no, I gave it back. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, what a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys go and did you guys uh, get any retribution on Shane after that for stealing from a friend or did he find out? Did he ever kill Shane? No, actually, actually, what happened was they showed up to my job because he stole it from the wrong people. And uh, I guess it was some white dude who had money. Of course, yes. That's some, who buys Apple yeah. computers. But yeah, he, hung so. out, he, he hung out with some Crips, and he had a nice Mercedes and bought him shit all the time. So he wow. was cool to kick it with. So whenever they needed a, he needed a favor, they showed up. So they literally, I kind of got kidnapped from my job at 19. And wow. they took me to Shane's house after I got the computer back because they wanted to know who stole it. And Shane wasn't there, but his 90-year-old grandma was there. 
and they called Shane or they FaceTimed him and they're like, we're sitting right here with grandma right now. Oh, so shit. listen, you fucking dummy. You're going to come take your ass whooping or grandma's going to get it. And then I was like, oh, my God, dude. Fuck. That, is it, this it, true? No, a hundred percent. Wow, Walter, go ahead. Just, 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 I was in the corner jerking off the entire time. <laughs> how do, yeah, I was how like, does my this... wife's about to get a beating. This is hot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh my Walter, wow, you're a little horn dog wow. over there, huh? You have no idea. <laughs> how does this guy sound more Native American than Walter? <laughs> Yes, I stole the laptop and <laughs> you, then I, when the white man took over. You ever done? You ever done a line of cocaine off a of life alert? It's wild. <laughs> off My a life goodness. alert? No. How is it, wouldn't it get stuck in the button or whatever? Cameron, over here, over here, Cameron. Yeah. So uh, they threatened the guy. So did he come? Did he get his beating, or did you have to do something to Grandma? What'd you do to Grandma? No, no, I didn't touch Grandma. I'm not, I don't do those kind of things, but. They ended up finding Shane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You fucked the 90-year-old grandma. Come on, tell the truth. It was a dry spell, so... Oh. You know. Anyway, uh, yeah. well, that's fun, Cameron. Yeah. And you've been doing stand-up for over a year. Anything fun? What's your favorite gig that you've done so far? Uh, the Savoy in Inglewood, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Inglewood. Uh, yeah. What, what type of... Yeah, I don't deliver over there. It was there. a... It, it, <laughs> Smart. Wait, 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 what'd you say? I didn't hear you. I said I don't deliver over in Inglewood. Why not? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the property value is going up. You should know that as a white dude. Uh. Whoa, whoa, Cameron, over here, over here, Cameron. Over here. You're over. right. I am 100% European. <laughs> I should know that as a white man. I will take that note back to my tribe. <laughs> I said tribe. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. Did you say tribe there at the end? No, I didn't. I said work. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Cameron, any other fun facts about you that we might find interesting about your family, um, about you? Yeah, about, actually. Yeah. My, uh, my uncle, um, I don't like to brag, but fuck it, we're here. Mm. My uncle started Fat Tuesdays, Guy ah. Tory. Oh, wow. That's yeah. your uncle? Oh, wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Well, yeah. Okay, and then, yeah. And then, I know Guy. Yeah, and then my dad put my uncle on. Joe Tory, he used to host Deaf Comedy Jam. Wow! So this is so, crazy. Yeah. You're and, like royalty. Yeah, yeah, I actually have a picture. We did one of those before and afters. You know, when everybody was doing those with Eleanor. You know, Eleanor. Uh -huh. Yeah. In the back of the whatever the fuck it is by the bar, mm -hmm. but we recreated the picture. Yeah. And one I was three, and then one I was twenty-four. And wow. It was actually, you know, it's pretty. That's really yeah. crazy. So, yeah, I used to hang out. My mom used to be a regular. So I would hang out back here because yeah. the babysitter was boring. And I was like, let's just go to the fucking And you're still store. close with your dad and your uncle, obviously? Uh, I mean, we're, yeah, we're close. I mean, yeah, not, not close enough. Why, it's not, why not close enough? I mean, why because, I mean, I, 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 my career would be a little bit, a little bit more progressed. But, but you they know. probably want you to get good, right? And you're doing it. You're starting at yeah, the ground you, level. Yeah, you're yeah, in the grits. Yeah, you're yeah, not taking yeah, anything for yeah. granted. Yeah, I think you're doing everything right. right so far. Yeah. Just got to keep fucking writing and grinding and yeah. tightening up and fucking yeah. doing it. Uh, you know? All right. There you All go. Right. Maybe, All maybe right, Tony. Write more jokes. Stop right, selling John. cars. Cameron Tory. Come on, baby. Let me know. Hey, yeah, Of course, he went right towards the ice cream. He went straight for the ice cream. Didn't I'm even have to tickle. tell him. I'm guessing a pop. What would he do oh, for, no, a for a Klondike bar, bar, huh? Yeah. Is it a Klondike? Yep. You won that round. I know, I know who goes for the Klondikes. <laughs> Wait, did he take two of them? Hey, no, give one of those no. back. No, I'm kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's reselling Klondike bars right now for $5 a pop. If anybody wants to buy a Klondike, he's be selling things. Uh, put your hands together for your next comedian, Chris Mandry. Here we go. Chris Mandry time. Live on a Monday night. Changes every day. Yeah. How about another hand for the Kill Tony band, huh? New music every week. It's unbelievable. There he is, Chris Mandry. Has anyone ever had their salad tossed professionally? 
You have, you know, with the oils and the paste. Sometimes I got the spoon. You know what I mean? Nobody here has been to a fine dining restaurant before? Had their salad toss, table side? You guys think I was talking about butt licking? With oils and paste, ma'am, and a spoon? It's disgusting. I'm a professional salad tosser. Tossed everyone's salads. This one restaurant I worked at, it didn't matter who you were, celebrities, locals, anybody with the money and the desire to have their salad tossed, I would gladly provide that service. Found out it's actually a skill you can bring home with you too, salad tossing. Made this girl a nice dinner, tossed her salad right at the kitchen table. She loved it, it was great for her, it was work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, was there more? Do you wanna finish it? No, it's good. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris. All right. So let's talk about it. That. Uh, let's do it. Let's talk about this salad. Wait, so you weren't talking about butch? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wasn't. Think, I think you, well, were ta- you yeah. talked about actual salads, and then you did like a one-liner about it, and then you continued on after that. You just committed <laughs> all the way, even though nobody was with you. I was you. going. I was. I was. You're in like, it. you know what? If I just keep the course, they're gonna fucking break any second. <laughs> yeah. If I just keep describing tossing an actual salad, and there's lettuce going one way and the other. And <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, how long you been doing stand up? So I had a handful of shows over like five years back home. And Let's then, just uh, say handful of shows from now on. Sure, uh, a handful of shows. <laughs> the years thing doesn't help. Um, so uh, let's, let's, let's do it. How much time do you think you have all together from everything that you have? Like the salad thing is like just one bad <laughs> minute, right? <laughs> right. It would be that sure. can't be your bread and butter. No pun it's intended. Not, no, no, it's not. Right. Um, no, so... I would say probably since I got here in December, I took a stand-up class. Huh. And, uh, oh, no. And it's been, I know, I know. At, uh, at Who Second taught City. it? The, the devil himself? <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> All right, here's what you do. Just talk about tossing salads. Yeah. <laughs> and then make note that you're not actually eating butt, but tossing salads. And go on and on. What, what comedy club was this at? What's that? Where was this at? Second City. Wow. Yeah. I know. I had a, there were a couple options, and I chose that one. So You should have went to the first city first. I, right. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So what else do you ever talk about? What else do you ever make jokes about? Um, so I guess I've got, uh, I got this, like, Italian character. I do, like, uh, Oh, got, please, like, poem, for the like, love of God. Thing. Let's get it. Let's get it. Hey, who wants your fucking salad tossed, huh? Give me the fucking pepper mill and a spoon. I don't even need a second spoon. I fucking crunch the pepper and just scoop all at the same fucking time. Yeah, can we, can we hear your? Uh, can we hear? Your yeah, let's get a little. Here, I got a little pulse. Like, a, let's get a little taste. Go ahead. Let's go ahead. This is uh, this is a uh, bad Sopranos, <laughs> bad Sopranos audition tapes, and action. G yeah yeah yeah. Pack the bowl, gobble gold, and stuff peppers down my soul. Stu Gatz forgot the goo Gatz, but he's got enough forgot for a stuff long hot. Here's what we're going to do. Wow. Roll a shkado on a hot man a cop. Make a couple to tree if that's all we got. I, I, can't, think, I can't think of ways to make the audience more silent. Like, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like you broke a code, like, of words all in an order so that nothing was funny. It's incredible. Like, you took one of the funniest accents and you made it so unfunny. I... I Go guess, ahead, uh, I, Walter. I guess our troops finally got a moment of silence today. <laughs> <laughs> that was a special Memorial Day treat, Chris. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about your real life. Uh, right. So, what what do you do exactly? You re- toss salads. I used to toss salads. Now right. I just work at a regular restaurant. Right. Um, You're a waiter. So I'm a waiter. I also work at the uh, professional drum shop down in Hollywood. Professional drum shop. Wait yep. a second here. <laughs> what do you ha- what What do you do for a professional drum shop? Right now I'm kind of like their IT, <laughs> IT guy. 
Um, oh, I do a little IT. Drums? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, what yeah, is that? that plug the computer into the wall? Like, like, <laughs> basically, that's that's kind of where it's at right now. Wow. So, you uh, don't play drums yourself? Oh, I d- yeah. That's, you do? That's why I came out here, yeah. Really? Yeah, you knew it. You came out here f- to play drums? Yeah, to be in a metal band. You're in a metal cool. band? Oh, yeah. my God. This is crazy. Uh, wow. Um, I mean, you're literally one of the worst comedians of all time, but... <laughs> Yeah, can we start making rules? Like, if they're super unfunny. Oh no, there's no rules. You. I mean, I don't care. I'll <laughs> um, do you know we do a thing on this show called the Mexican Drama? I've I've seen it. Yeah. You've seen it. Yeah. You do worked you your whole life for this. Shut up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you can handle it? Do you think you can handle a drum solo going up against so. Joelberg? I mean, if it's you win, you'll shot. be. I mean, I did. Th- this was worth the shot coming up here, and <laughs> it didn't go so well. So might as well. Give that a shot, too. See how it you goes, guys you think know? we should do a Mexican drum off, huh? What do you think? All right, here we go. Joel, go to the bit. back. I appreciate you very much. We'll give him a fucking shot. Let's see what happens here. And uh, Chris Mandry, get behind the drums. Now, if you win this, if you have a better drum solo than Joel, then you become the new Kill Tony drummer full time. You're going with us on the summer tour all through the Midwest, Chicago, New York. It's a really big deal. Uh... But I must warn you, nobody has ever beaten Joelberg Joel Jimenez at his own gig before. So, do you, you think you can handle it? Yeah. All right, well. You guys excited? All right. Okay, well, uh, going first tonight, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. He was, you know, he, he couldn't have done any worse on stage. But let's find out if he actually has a chance. One of the worst comedians ever could become the new drummer here tonight. A guy that's literally done it a handful of times over years. He has no work ethic, no natural abilities whatsoever comedically. And he has a chance of becoming a full-time cast member. Is this not excitement? (laughs) All right, here he goes. Chris Mandry, everyone. Hit it, Chris. There's a guy dancing. This guy's having the time of his life. Chris Mandry. Holy shit. Wow. Very exciting. Holy shit. Tony, that might be the best uh, I've seen somebody do. That is one of the best we've ever seen anybody do. And... uh, that's crazy. The pressure is on. But you know what? What do you, you, I think we should make it even a little bit harder for Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. I agree. Huh? I agree. Because tonight we have a special, a uh, very special person in attendance. The uh, the backup sound guy here at the comedy store is actually a drummer, and he has seen this show. And Danny Lucas, the regular sound guy put him in position. He's a a real drummer. He's a real Mexican. (laughs) And he's an employee of the comedy store. He was going to do this at the end of the episode. I guess we're going to do it in the middle instead. Let's do it. Put your hands together. He's also going to compete for Joel's job. This is a real Mexican drum off. Make some noise for Anthony Drinkwater. Wow, look at this. Just a rotating door of drum solos. He is also, at the end of this, we're going to find out who your favorite was. Now, remember, it's not just about drums. It's about performance. It's about comedic output during the drum solo. It's about showmanship. Are you guys ready for another drum off? Here he is, Comedy Store Zone, Anthony Drinkwater. Whoa. Wow. Holy shit. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my god. 
God. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. Okay. Wow. Wow. I mean, guys. this is one of those situations that is complete chaos. For those of you that are longtime fans of the show, you must be sweating bullets right now. I know we are. This is an, an incredible moment. This is the first ever three-way Mexican drum off. And here to defend his throne, undefeated all time in Mexican drum offs, kill Tony's very own Joelbert Joel Jimenez. He's got a giant strap on on. He this took that kid's like medication. He took the first comet's medication. Uh, wow, he has a gigantic purple dildo attached to him. We haven't even seen him drum yet. The place is in chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, with his drum solo, the one, the only, Jober. Oh, can I get some claps? <laughs> Here he goes. Unbelievable. He's foaming at the mouth. Wow, huh? That's a standing ovation. He's got ice cream all around. He's got ice cream coming out of his mouth. He's spinning on the ground. The comedians are even on their feet. It's unbelievable. Joelberg. I told you, I'm fucking ready to die for this shit. You fucking idiots. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. Wow. Truly, the monster of Kill Tony, Joelberg, Joel Jimenez. All right. My, how easily he appears to have dominated. How many of you have Chris Mandry winning that Mexican drum off, huh? Wow, how many? How, how many? How many of you have? How many of you have Anthony Drinkwater winning the Mexican drum up? Ah, that's a lot of people. How many of you have Joelberg Joel Jimenez winning? Wow, wow, who has? Uh, he's hitting. For those of you that are just listening, I must warn you: you're crazy for just listening to this podcast. You absolutely need to start watching and tell your friends to start watching on YouTube every single week. He's been hitting the symbols with a giant purple strap-on <laughs> dildo. I bring viewers. That's what I do. It's comedic fucking steroids. That's incredible. Uh, the Chris Mandry, you can go back to your seat. How about another hand for the great Anthony? Drink water coming down. Well working lights. Wow. Amazing. Indeed. Both were amazing. We got to say, those were My the, goodness. The those were great amazing drum drum ops. And Joel Berg comes through in the clutch. I mean, just defending the throne. He's gone now. For those of you just listening, he was hitting uh, his dildo against drums. He ate a Klondike bar during all of that. Just incredible. I've never seen the comedians... <laughs> For Can some I get reason. some claps? <laughs> uh, 
I think we found out tonight that uh, hitting a strap on against a drum might be one of the funniest things in all of comedy. I mean, you just can't beat that. Tony, I got Aphrodite drooling over here. Wow. Look at that. You got the fucking... That looks like Barney's cock. Look what's under it, dude. I got them hangers, dude. <laughs> that came with balls, too? Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. It's crazy. Wow. By the way, that's our YouTube-friendly uh, purple dildo that you can get on Amazon Prime right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is uh, that is no nudity. That is a fake penis. Get YouTube. that damn word out of your mouth, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a uh, we have a regular on this show. Perhaps one of the only things that can even follow any c- type of chaos like that is uh, is another one of the funniest humans that we know. You heard a little bit about him here tonight. His reputation precedes him. As a regular, he's truly one of the best we've ever had. Uh, always entertaining every week. He has his own very distinct, unorthodox style. Uh, he's absolutely wild, and I think he's one of the funniest things in the world right now. Put your hands together for the great William Montgomery, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Here he is. Here he is. Live in the flesh. William Montgomery. How's it going? My name is William Montgomery, and I'm running for county alderman. (laughs) It's been a long time coming. I think I realized I wanted to be a politician the day my grandfather went overboard on a boat we were on. I couldn't save him, damned if I didn't try. He was out in the waves for probably 30 minutes. I just couldn't reach him. My arms weren't long enough. But what I can promise you people tonight, if y'all elect me to county alderman, Your arms might not be long enough, but by God, mine will be! I watched my grandfather die! Out in the surf! This is Vaseline in my hair! How am I gonna go to sleep tonight? I'm going to have to remember to take a shower. It's all over. Wow. William lights out Montgomery. Tony, are you cool with me uh, getting into a couple of my policies? Uh, if, you have, if you have more, are you, are you, are, this is like a real pitch for what? County alderman? County alderman. Is that a real vote that's coming up? It is. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Sure. If we're on the topic of making our community safer, let's really sit down and talk about the elephant in the room. There have been studies conducted... Hold on, wait, wait. I don't think we need the national anthem. It's just county alderman yeah, that he's running good. for. It's definitely not presidential. Go ahead. There have been studies conducted by our leading scientists in the great nation of America that prove beyond any shadow of a doubt elephants serve No other purpose than the very real risk of trampling people at our local zoos. If I'm elected county alderman, elephants will no longer be allowed in our zoos by 2022. Pachyderms, more like pack your bags. We don't need your germs. Wow. That's incredible. So one of your main, the first policy you pitch is getting rid of elephants by 2022. Okay, what's another policy? In every community I go and visit, there's always a common theme, a theme that the more and more I see happening, the more and more I want your vote as county alderman. (laughs) If I can get your vote as county alderman, you can take it to the bank. I will be lowering all sidewalks to the height of the street. Every night I turn on the news and see image after image of kids, of people breaking their ankles, breaking their legs, because our society tells us the height of the sidewalk has to be that of the height of the street. USA! USA! All right. So, uh, William, uh, are there other policies? This is uh, actually a side note, but my opponent has... has Can I ask you something? This is is your look for politics? (laughs) You look like you own a mortuary. Yeah. (laughs) 
You're selling <laughs> waterbeds in Van Nuys or something yeah. like that. What do I sell? Yeah, I do sell waterbeds. Hey, I heard you got kicked out recently at a show. We, we yeah, heard he, earlier. What, he, he, Walter. He looks, Walter. He, he looks like a pastor of a church that worships the white devil. <laughs> So, William, tell us a little bit about this uh, this gig. You had to sneak beer into it, huh? Is this how you represent the Kill Tony brand when you're out there on the road, huh? I did. I was uh, drinking Coors Light. Um, Coors Light. You had to sneak Coors Light. It was Coors a bite and, and the guy, I brought it on stage, and the guy, when I got off stage, he came up to the beer, and he smelled it, and he was like, that's fake beer, right? Oh, and I said, God. no, it's not. And he said, what are you talking about? And y'all just picture me wearing this outfit, just putting on my tape player some Allman Brothers band, just one of their live recordings, just getting the guy by the throat, just cutting it. Wait, you, wait, you cut the guy's throat? Is that true? No, I'm kidding. I lost a jacket. Oh. That night I lost a jacket. It was horrible. Uh... Are you looking at more policies right now? <laughs> Just as a little side note, uh, I don't know if any of you have been able to see my opponent's truck. He drives every day. It's the real loud one with the double Confederate flags prominently displaying on the cab of his truck. Sir, this is America, not Mississippi in the 90s. I don't, I don't. That was my best joke. It scares me. It was not uproarious laughter. I don't get this guy's comedy, but he has good taste in sunglasses. Yeah, you guys do have the same sunglasses on. It's very impressive. It almost seems like... Where'd you get those sunglasses? 1972. <laughs> you got it from the 1899 <laughs> cent store. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. So stare down is never really good for podcasting. Um <laughs> So, uh, William, anything else in your normal life happen uh, this week? I know you're running for alderman and that you're really committed to I'm talking. I'm running for alderman. Y'all don't repeat this, but I, uh, I literally I got a new pet from Petco. Let's hear some noise. <laughs> Why would we hear noise for that? What, what type of pet did you get? A bearded dragon. You got a bearded dragon? A bearded dragon. He uh, is in my bathtub. Uh, I thought he couldn't climb up the sides. He did. He's now lost in my apartment. <laughs> Every night I go to sleep for the past five nights, I've received horrible bite marks on my neck. <laughs> is this true? It is. It really scares me. I have a bearded dragon on the loose. I was trying to be a good Samaritan, just adopting a bearded dragon. I go to How sleep. How much was it to adopt a bearded dragon? $300. <laughs> oh, that's not. That's not being a good person. You paid $300 for a bearded dragon that you weren't prepared to take care of, William. <laughs> and now he is slithering through my apartment, <laughs> waiting for me to go to sleep. I breathe out of my mouth. Uh, I feel like he hears me breathing out of my mouth. And he bites me, and I start having dreams about peeing in my bed, even though I don't. Are you sure you don't? Have you ever peed the bed? I did last night. Is that true? Is it that, is. Really? William, I, th I think sometimes you lie. I just hope y'all remember me. I don't, I don't know if y'all used to get the, uh, the Beckett magazines about the most just valuable playing cards. I was on <laughs> one at one point as a baseball player for the Mets. And there was a picture of me looking for an old friend named Tony Chin. I, oh. I don't know where Tony Chin is. He came up as a person I might know on Facebook the other day. A lot of people have been, um, have been very curious as to whether Tony Chin is a real person or not. I know people close to me. It's come up in my household uh, as of late. <laughs> Is someone, my, my wife asked me, she specifically asked, is, do you think Tony Chin is a real person? Is Tony Chin a real person? We, Tony we, Chin taught me to do CPR. I don't know if y'all remember the movie The Sandlot, but when that really, really uh, pretty girl... Wendy Peppercorn. Wendy Peppercorn, just that one guy, just... Squints. D squints. 
he just acted like he was drowning, and then just Wendy Peppercorn touching his lips. There's just a moment, Tony Chin, I pretended like I drowned in a pool, and Tony Chin saved me, and the rest is history. Do the math. Why would we have to do the math? <laughs> All right, William. Well, <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love this fucking guy. How about, how about another hand for William Montgomery, everybody? A new minute, fun interview. Grab some ice cream, William. Don't leave without ice cream. Possible way. Yeah, you know what? Before we go, uh, let's go back to the bucket. But before we do, let's have uh, let's have some more fun. Uh, about a month ago in Phoenix, Arizona, we had a uh, the third ever golden ticket winner. He's already came in to redeem a spot here on Kill Tony once. This is his second time ever coming here to the Comedy Store. He just turned 21 three weeks ago, and uh, He's a monster. Let's see another new minute from Tristan Bowling, everybody, huh? Golden ticket winner from Phoenix, Arizona, 21 years old. Here he is, Tristan Bowling. Oh, how we doing, Kill Tony? Oh, we having fun? This is cool. Ah, oh, geez Louise. Uh, I just turned 21 years old, which is sick. I mean, I'm an alcoholic. Dope. Uh... My dad tries to take me out places to bond, you know? He, like, takes me to Hooters and shit. Do I look like a Hooters guy? You know? Like, my natural habitat is a fucking Hooters? Like, no. Like, I don't know why you need a boner to eat. Seriously, can you imagine? Like, it's a kickstand for dipping sauce. Like, no. There's no fucking utility there. I don't get it. Every time we go there, my dad just gets drunk and pretends like we both don't know mom. You know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck? The woman who pushed me out, we've met. Like, she would have taken me to Chili's. I'm a tattletale, bitch. Like, oh, dude, I, uh, I, really, I really love uh, blind people. Oh, shit. Is there more? You want to finish? Yeah, yeah go I ahead. can finish it up. Blind people. I love blind people, and I think Braille is great, but how do they find it? You know, is that? Am, am, I, am I alone in that? Can you imagine being like, where did Stacy go? She went to the bathroom a minute ago. It's like, oh, she's been reading Stucco for 45 minutes. <laughs> Just being like, Van, Van Nuys has so much culture. Is that an umlaut? Like, all right, guys, my name's been Tristan. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Tristan Bowling. Another great new minute. Uh, very, very exciting stuff. Thank third, you. Third time ever on the show. You're so fun. It was like a real, it felt like like a refreshing reset in here. Yeah, that was great. I mean, like, I'm no purple dildo, but I try my best, Tony. No, no, it's That's true. goddamn right you're not. <laughs> my goodness. Look at this postman back here. He's in shambles. Still has the underwear. Shirt tucked into the underwear. Rare maneuver. And then look at this. We have this little adorable fucking female Ghostbuster up here. <laughs> From the new, from the most recent Ghostbusters. <laughs> My mom told me I look like a big rig tricycle mechanic. You do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. I got the docks on. Though. You're like a plumber. Bring your daughter to work day. <laughs> <laughs> Tristan's like a hip dude. He's got like real style. Oh yeah, I'm dripping head to toe. You know yeah. Tony. Tristan, you know Tristan's it. the type of guy that like dresses Pete Davidson and shit oh, like that. Dude. Like, hey, he Tristan. wishes I could dress him. I would get him in a ghillie suit looking fucking stupid. That's you know true. what I mean? That's true. That's 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 a big part of his thing is what he looks like. Oh man, Ariana would have given him a chance. Only, Just saying, fuck. Only if. <laughs> So, uh, Tristan, it's been a couple weeks since we've seen you. What else has been going on in life? Uh, nothing much. Phoenix is fun. Still a big, dirty piece of shit, though. Yeah. Um, uh, I did a rap show recently. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You do rap. Your rap uh, blew us away in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. How'd the rap show go for you? It was really fun. Uh, they introduced me as a rapper, and then my pasty ass got up there. So everyone was just like, How? what? Did and they then, give you a rap name or anything like that? Uh, yeah, my rap name's Baby Boy. Baby Boy. Yeah. Oh, shit. Would, you, would you mind giving this audience a little, would you guys like a little sample yeah, of uh, absolutely. There he is. Just All right. 
He's going to rap for you. All right. Got gratitude, I call me Latitude, the baddest dude, ripping in the club with the attitude. I'm doing my best to stay on the path, less traveled, lay down the concrete, paving over the gravel. Hey, find me like shark in the swamp, and I'm chugging the water that turned the frog skate. Right in the hairy, that Potter, her mighty, the mother, red tucker, that dead like a Sunday. Hey, no to the bones like it's Sunday. Hey, not in her palm like it's palm, mate. Hey, sip it the tip, it looks Sunday. Hey, palm like a bomb like a Sunday. Cause see, I am clarity, motherfucking get fuck with me. I killed Tony, fucking up this shit, and no one fuck with me, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> Tristan Bowling. This guy's full of surprises. Was, Even the, the right. Apollo 13 is approving hey, this. Hey, hey, hey. The real Apollo. Wow, look at. Hey, he knows how to. Damn. I got all that shit. I played Fortnite a couple times. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. That's incredible. You know, you even have the Apollo 13 on your side. Got That's that right. That's inc uh, Your, your likability range is wild, yeah. Tristan. Everybody likes you. It's like a hip Jerry Afro Lewis. is booing me? Oh, someone's booing. A Aphrodite, what the fuck? Afro, what do you want to do? Can you out-rap him? Can you out-rap me? You can? Are you, you can? Are you fucking serious? This show's out of control. Afro, you're going to go spit bars and make me look like a bitch? No, no. no she's fucking not okay going then. to. She's, she's just going through a diabetic shock right now. She had three ice creams. <laughs> you just have to ask her to be in one of your <laughs> rap music videos. Oh, Oh, God. Come the on, last, Afro, The last relax. rap she heard Afro, was by just... Curtis Blow. She doesn't know anything about that. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, hang out with my Tristan, dildo in anything the else that uh, anything else that's happened in the past couple weeks that we'd be surprised to about or uh, anything else in life? Um, Your parents excited about this new Kill Tony thing you got going uh, on? Dude, where you go to LA once every couple weeks? Ah, uh, dude, they're so fucking hyped, dog. Really? Yeah, it's so cool. They just don't want me to drink and drive and shit, but fuck them. You know what yeah, I mean? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Tristan, that's right. You're a real 21 year old rock star. You can do whatever dude, my you want. My mom's like, don't smoke weed in the car on the ride over. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. you're not there. I'm a chain smoke blunts, bitch. Like, wow. <laughs> Damn. That's incredible. How many blunts do you have to chain smoke for a guy like you to be able to do like that one footed thing like that? <laughs> listen, listen, Tony, I've been going all day. <laughs> and uh, no, I, I, I have too high of a tolerance when it comes to weed. Someone can just hit me over the head with marijuana baseball bat. I wouldn't feel shit. It's fucked up. Well, that's incredible because our friends at Speedweed actually have a marijuana baseball bat that we are <laughs> going to hit you in the head with right now. Uh, Gino brought a. All right. Dude, the, 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 the dispensary edibles in Arizona are so different compared to the ones here. You can get like a 500 milligram chocolate bar there and just ruin your life. What happens if you eat a 500 uh, milligram chocolate bar? That's asleep. what happened to William Montgomery, dog. Today? He, he was an accountant. Someone slipped him some syrup and now he's just like, eh, you know? Is that the explanation for him running for county alderman for the <laughs> first time ever? Is that him version of like getting like ego death, just trying to get his shit together? It's wild. Well, Tristan, you're 21 years old. You've had three good sets on this show. I can't wait to see more. Come back anytime. Yeah, absolutely. We love him. It's Tristan that Bowling, everybody. Oh, have a great night, everybody. This guy got the golden ticket, and he takes advantage of it. Drives six or seven hours to be here on a Monday. How crazy is that? One more time for Tristan, everybody. Steve, was that your first time seeing Tristan, Steve? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's incredible. Fun. Yeah. We're having fun here. Steve, uh, have I ever asked you before, is there, is there ever anything you did when you first started stand-up comedy that you're surprised that you did, like a joke or like a, you uh, know? Everything. Really? Yeah. I is there anything that really? the outfit. Really? What was yeah, your comedy outfit? I would outfit? wear an Andrew Dice Clay t-shirt underneath to bring me good luck. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and, then, and then I'd wear a Hawaiian shirt because oh. I wanted people to think I was like the life of the Right. Party. You know what's funny? I think I remember you wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Were you still wearing that in 2007, you think? Uh, maybe. No. I, I, no, by that no, I've given up on I that. I feel like I remember seeing you in a Hawaiian shirt one time. And I remember because my first impression of you was actually like I thought – when I first saw you, I was like, I bet this guy's an asshole off stage. <laughs> like, it's like there was something about you in which I'm like, I bet this guy's mean. Do you ever get that? Do people assume that you're mean right from the beginning? Uh, no, it was no. just me. Anyway, but, uh, well, there we go. A nice little break from the comedy there for a <laughs> second. Uh, you know, it's good for us to catch our breath sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. I remember thinking, like, this guy seems so nice on stage, but I bet he's mean off stage. And then here we are, 12 years later, friends, you're giving ice cream out to everybody. Yeah. 
Dude, and you guys are way cooler than me. Boy, like, but when I'm, I feel like I'm hanging out with the bad kids, right? Are now. you kidding me? You're about to have the number one comedy album in the world on mm-hmm. iTunes. The Kill Tony bump is in full effect. <laughs> it's happening. I pulled another name out of the bucket. You guys excited to get back to the bucket one more time, huh? <laughs> Seems like some people are mad out there. Put your hands together for your final comedian of the night, Mara Gold, everyone. Mara Gold. Oh, yay, girl. One more time for Mara Gold, everyone. Thanks. I can't rap, but I do have one impression. Do you guys like impressions? Cool. Uh, this is my impression of a really woke cannibal. Really woke cannibal. <clears throat> I don't even taste race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, giving a hand job is a lot like playing Mortal Kombat, right? Um, I'll explain. So, at first it's kind of fun but then your hands cramp up real fast and after a couple minutes, you're just over it and all you want to do is finish him. (laughs) Yeah, that's all I got. (laughs) There you go, 50 seconds from Mara Gold. All right, so Mara, let's talk about it. First time on the show? Oh yeah. All right, how long have you been doing stand-up? Two months? Three, three months? Three months. All here in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What made you want to start? Can't afford therapy. Can't afford therapy. Oh, we've been hearing that a lot lately. Really? That's been a reoccurring theme. My friends that do go to therapy and do comedy are laughing right now. Uh, so what do you think you need therapy for? Um, I'm Minnesotan, so a You're lot of repressed... You're what? Minnesotan. You're Minnesotan. Yeah. Oh, wow. There's some Minis- fans of Minnesota out there. All right. My goodness. Um, so, because you're from Minnesota, you're depressed? Depressed and repressed. Depressed and repressed. Yeah. Tell us more about you, Mara. What, what, what else? Tell us more. Uh, Good parents? Fun childhood? The best. Wow, all right. Uh, <laughs> this is just fucking amazing right now. This is what this is what happened to Lisa Loeb after all, everything. That, uh, <laughs> so uh, was it really bad? Because I'm sensing some sarcasm there, I think. It wasn't terrific. It wasn't terrific. Can you be more descriptive of what your childhood was like? Like specifically? Sure, yes. Like, mean- like, we're, like live show specifically. <laughs> like they're all watching you right now oh, specifically. Boy. One's dead, so like that's fine. Your mom's dead? No, my dad's dead. Dad's dead. How did he dead. die? Uh, pancreatic cancer. Wow, that's a big one. That 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 gets you quick. It's not great. Did you? You didn't have much warning. Once he got it, it was soon after that, correct? Pretty, pretty like a year. Like a year. Yeah. Uh huh. Were you and your dad close? Yeah. How old were you when he died? Twenty-four. And he was a heavy smoker. Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, it was, and then quit, and then... Yeah. Well, at the Whoops. end, I'm sure, he, yeah, he had to quit, you know what I mean? Can't keep smoking after the old dead dead, you know what I mean? Uh, how about mom? she a smoker, too? Uh, um, you don't know much about your mom. <laughs> when did you move out of the house? Uh, 16. 16, now that's interesting. What did you really move young. into? Like, uh, how did you move away at 16? Uh, I packed my bag and... You had an older boyfriend, didn't you? Older boyfriend? <laughs> older boyfriend? No, not at the time. So where'd you go? You God. packed your bags and then? I moved into a house with a bunch of old hippies and young, young frat boys. Older. Old hippies and young frat boys. That is an interesting combination. Yeah, the, that's my what favorite porn category. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> old hippies and young frat boys. <laughs> At the same time, both of those? Yes. <laughs> it doesn't really go it. together very... Like That seems like a weird combination. Yeah, so what happened? You end up staying in that house, then what happens? Did you hang out more with the old hippies or the young frat boys? None of the above. 
I, w- I came home one night and there was just a naked frat boy in my bed and then I just took my bag and left forever. Oh. You left forever and then where'd you go? Never Neverland. <laughs> no, I took the train to Portland. Port- you took a train to Portland. Where were you before? Minnesota. And you just took the train due west. You're like, I'm going to Portland. Yeah. Empire Builder. You get off the train in Portland, then what happens? Uh, I worked at a hostel for a while. Did you, and you stayed at that hostel mm-hmm. while working there? Yes, yes, yes. Incredible. For how long? Uh, like two months. Two months, and then what? Uh, and then I ran out of money. Yeah. I went home, I think. Back to Minnesota. Yeah. Highlight that. of your life. Anything interesting uh, that's <laughs> ever happened on your travels or at home or perhaps in any way whatsoever. Any fun facts about you? Something that you think makes you a little bit different than anybody else or something that's happened? That we, why you ended up the way you did? Careful. He doesn't know you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this would be a crazy show to come on to, but I wouldn't be surprised. Go ahead. Anything, anything that you think uh, you're good at, or any hobbies that you have, or uh, I, oh, do you play I, drums? Or? I used to play drums. <laughs> Did you, you create Broad drums. City or I anything? The harmonica. You played a harmonica yeah. back in the day. Wow! And look at that face that you make <laughs> after that. That's incredible. Like a young, like a young Howard Stern. Not proud. Um, oh God. Samara, uh, what do you do uh, for fun? Like, what are things that you enjoy? You a, a heavy drinker? Yes. You are? Absolutely, yeah. Wow. How many drinks do you think you have a night? Tonight? like Not tonight oh. specifically, but on an average night of drinking. Six, seven, eight? Five to ten, yeah. Five to ten, yeah. right in there. Uh huh. And what's your living situation? A lot of fans of heavy drinking. Wow, standing ovation from the guy that uh, was dancing at Joel's drum off earlier. Who would have guessed? Um, so Mara, how about a crazy night of drinking for you? Anything you remember from a crazy night of drinking? Some type of like accomplishment or something? People were like, you know what you did last night? And they told you. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so when I moved to LA, I got punched by two different dudes on two consecutive nights. Ugh. Wow, what a bitch you must have been. You yeah. know what I mean? Jesus. <laughs> two separate dudes. Are you- so you're I really mean, obnoxious when you drink, or yeah, you do you bad stuff. Yeah, you must just be an angry prude or something like yeah. that. I mean, a prude. What, what did you do? I'm just kidding. What is a comedy show? What did you do to? Uh, <laughs> what did you do to uh, get punched in the face? I didn't. Only once was in the face. Okay, where, where was the other place that you got punched? The, like, oh, that was a donkey punch. That's that's oh. that's game on, dude. Yeah. Oh, can't you got com- fisted. Can't complain about those. Uh, so, what did you do to get punched? The w- first time I just got stuck in like a 12 dude stomp down, and I was ju- I just froze because I didn't know what to do. And then it wasn't on purpose. 12 dude stomp down. Yeah, like, That's the name of the band the guy I beat earlier was in, actually. 12 dude <laughs> stomp down. 12 dude stomp down. So, how did that happen? How'd you get into a 12 dude stomp I, down? I was just there, and then it happened around me, and I, I, didn't, I didn't, you know, fight or flight. I just froze in place. And it was an accident. It wasn't on purpose. Okay, so you, that was one of the punches. Yeah. How about the other time you got punched? Was that an accident, too? That was less of an accident. Okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> he got... There's a, 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 a fellow that got upset that uh, I was a Jew. Wait, that you were Jewish? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh you, a wait a crime. second. Wait a second. You're Jewish? I know. You got to get the fuck... No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so... A guy you were hanging out with found out that, no, just some guy randomly at a place was like, you're Jewish. And you're like, yeah, I'm Jewish. More or less, yeah. And then he punched you in the face. <laughs> in the butt. There's a little more to it than that, but more or oh. less, yeah. <sighs> okay. Oh, wow. Uh, I feel like I was on Etsy for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Mara. Um, I, I would, uh, Yeah. I feel like she has the world record for most NPR listened to ever. Yeah, it's incredible. I feel like Ira Glass is your dream man. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> back to you in the studio, Tony. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just a little bit wild. I'm trying to figure out. Like, I feel like there's something about you that you know would break this interview wide open right now that you don't want to talk about because you don't want it to be out there. And then we're just going to end up ending this thing. Like, whoa, that was a crazy bad ending to the, 
to an unbelievable show. It was like so exciting the whole time. And then like there was that one that went up at the end and like we couldn't get any real answers out of her. And she just sort of half told stories. I'm just bad at thinking on my feet. What? I'm bad at thinking on my feet. You're bad at thinking on your... Wow, I almost thought that you were going to give us a fun fact about your feet for a second is what I thought I heard. I'm like, oh, there's something up with your feet? Here we go. We'll be able to get out on a big laugh and then we'll all go home happy. You know, know, comedy... This guy's falling asleep. (laughs) Walter's wife's husband is falling asleep right now. We're losing him. You see that, Mara? That doesn't happen on Kill Tony. I hate that guy. He stole my wife. (laughs) All right. Marguerite, come back to me. <laughs> Mara, is there anything that we're missing that you think might be uh, that you might be interesting or uh, something, something that you've done or something that you had happen to you, or maybe even something that you saw? Perhaps even you were out doing something and w- you saw William Montgomery do something <laughs> interesting. You could tell us about that. I don't have any William Montgomery stories yet. No, right. <sighs> What's your favorite porn? Black ambush. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something uh, that's like interesting that. about you. Is there uh, perhaps something that you like to do for a hobby? Something that you fucking anything in the world? Like what the fuck do you do? Like for, let's let's go through an average day. This is what this is what I this is what I like to do when I find out that someone is just a glass of water. So. <laughs> Let's go through an average day. Where do you wake up? You start your day here in Los Angeles. You wake up where? I just moved today, yesterday, uh-huh. so... Yeah, you moved yesterday to where? Koreatown. Koreatown. Five. You live by yourself. No, I live with five dudes. Five dudes. One place. So your place is in the living room. Three hippies. Alpha, beta, groovy. <laughs> it's on a couch. You're on a couch. No, I have like a ballroom to myself. You have a ballroom to yourself. Are you saying that because there's 10 testicles around you and you wake up every morning? All right, let's get out of here. There's Mara Gold. There we go. We got to get her out of here. There she goes, Mara Gold. Hey, look at this drawing from Ryan J. Ebel. Whatever you do right now, you go to iTunes. And you buy Jabba right now. And you pre-order Reagan and Watkins. You do both fucking things for me. This is a free podcast. So go out there and have some fucking fun. Listen to Jabba. Rate, review, rate, review. Their pre-order for uh, Reagan and Watkins. It's coming out. They're on panel next week. How about another hand for the great Steve Simone? Thank you for having me, buddy. I feel like the show was so crazy tonight. We barely even got... It's so chaos. A lot more so much fun, a lot though. more drums and rapping than there usually is. Uh, how about another hand for uh, the great Walter over there, huh? Reagan and Watkins release party, June seventh. The album or the release party, June sixth, the album, June seventh. But the point is you can pre order it right now. So do that. Listen to uh, Jeremiah Wonders on everything podcastable and subscribe to his YouTube at Jeremiah Watkins and follow him on social media at Jeremiah Stand Up. Anything else, Jeremiah? Uh, yeah, it's a second volume of the Roadcast of Jeremiah Wonders with the Kill Tony yeah. crew, Red Band, Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah, and we had a Menace. lot of we had a lot of fun making those. Yeah, and uh, Reagan Watkins is on panel next week, so very excited. They are about on that. panel for you, LA. Uh, you're nearby LA, and you're a diehard Reagan and Watkins fan. We know there's a lot of you. Come here uh, next week. It's going to be a big party. Maybe some special band members filling in for uh, the great Jeremiah Watkins. How about one more time for Jeremiah? Huh? <laughs> And over there, we got Silent But Deadly, the lone assassin, Chroma Chris over there. Chroma, what do you think about tonight's episode? Uh, It it really delivered, Tony. (laughs) All right, there you go. Chroma Chris is on Instagram at Chroma Chris. Do you have a Twitter yet? (laughs) No. Oh, okay. How about another hand, guys? He did a lot of work tonight. The winner of double Mexican drum off, Joel Joel Jimenez, huh? (laughs) Sort of a chant there. Still has the dildo on. He's on uh, social media, mostly sorry. We're continuing our tour. All the shows are almost sold out if they're not sold out already. Definitely get on that uh, second Gramercy show if you're in New York because that will sell out. And, uh, yeah, everything else is fucking gravy. Reagan and Watkins next week. Jeff Ross the week after that, which is technically our six-year birthday. 
And uh, and then the week after that is uh, Brian Holtzman for the first Fuck time yeah. ever. So we're really excited about the shows going on here. Come on back. Show your friends the show. Have a lot of fun out there. We love you, live audience. Thank you for coming. Good night. See Thank you, guys. You.